this is the gorgeous Kaifakauka Valley in the Whanganui River region and we're here on Dan Steele's farm where you can literally breathe in the history around you. Now Dan is a bit of a passionate man about his history and protecting it so he's teamed up with the local dock guys and they're doing everything they can to try and restore some of our history for anybody who wants to come and have a look at it. So let's go and meet them. I'm here with Jonathan Welsh, who is an archaeologist for the Department of Conservation. How are you doing, Jonathan? Good luck on yourself. I am very well and very pleased to be here today because I thought you might be able to tell us a little bit about what's special about this region and why is it so significant to our heritage. Well, Nick, we're standing in one of the valleys associated with the Mangapura Kaifakauka Return Servicemen Settlement Scheme. This scheme was established following World War I for the rehabilitation of soldiers fought in places like Gallipoli and the Western Front in Europe. The valley was largely a farming community. It must have been hard work farming in here. It looks like pretty rough terrain It was to indeed. Me. In fact, it was so hard that come the 1940s, the valley was abandoned. Both valleys were abandoned. Yep. Um, Mangapura was closed and became Crown property, while the Kaifakauka was generally incorporated into larger and larger farms. And actually, in the height of the farming kind of heyday here, there were up to 50 families living in this valley, but you wouldn't think it now. Why is this place unique for you as a dock archaeologist? Much of the standing structures in the valley were torn down. Now, here on this private land adjacent to the National Park, we have standing structures yeah. associated with that settlement scheme and that people can touch, they can see and they can visit. Now Dan, what's so important about this place to you? The mystery and the magic of the place, I suppose, uh, there's thousands and thousands of hours gone in by the returned soldiers into, into doing these tracks and these old buildings and there's just so many stories, so many stories. What is this building that we're standing in, in front of here? This is the old supply shed that uh, all the gear was brought in from the river boats to supply all the farms that were all in the valleys out from here. Uh, so they could come and get their grass seed and things, their crates of whiskey, meet up with the guys I hadn't seen for a couple of weeks. You're putting a lot of effort in here. What do you hope to achieve out of this? I want to put the best one day walk in, one day tramp in New Zealand so people can come out and, and relive the history and see a blue duck or listen to the Kiwis at night. Here we are, Nick, on this uh, swing bridge that my family, Doc, and the council have actually built across the top of this old historic hardwood bridge that was put in here in the 1920s, dragged in here by pack horse teams and bullock teams. So we've put this over here to try and preserve this. Very important part of the story of the whole Bridge to Nowhere era, how they actually got into these farms, because access was the big problem. When Dan Steele bought this farm, he didn't just buy the land, he bought a whole host of stories of uh, part of our heritage and, and I guess it's neat to see that him and the local dock guys are doing something to protect it and maybe that's something we can think of if we find something like that in our backyards. Time to hit the road I think, so we'll get moving. Away we go driver, yeah. Take me away, really far from here. 